Creating a shopping cart makes it easier to sell your products or services and accept payments from your WordPress website. But WordPress doesn't offer this feature by default, which is challenging if you're setting up an online store. In this video, I'll show you how to add a shopping cart to WordPress without ever writing a single line of code. Everyone here at Seabroad loves having you part of the community, so please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. All right, let's get started. So here I'm over at my WordPress dashboard, and the first two things we need to do is install WooCommerce and Seedprod. If you already have these installed, you can use the timestamps in the description to skip ahead in the video if you like. So let's go over on the left-hand side. We'll go to Plugins and go to Add New. And in the top right, we're gonna search the plugins for WooCommerce. This should be the first result right here called WooCommerce. Let's go ahead and install now. When that's finished, we can go ahead and click on the activate button. And next WooCommerce will run you through a setup wizard. So we can go through these details. You'll see up top, we have one, two, three, four, and five. So let's go ahead first. It wants some information about the address. And let's go ahead and click on continue. You'll see a window pop up about usage tracking. I'm going to say no thanks. On the following screen, it will ask in which industry does the store operate? So select the ones that apply for you and go ahead and click continue. Next, it's gonna ask what type of products will be listed. So you have physical products. Will people be downloading a online product? Subscriptions, memberships, bookings, bundles, or a customizable product? I'm gonna leave it for physical products for this example and click on continue. Next, it's gonna ask about our business. So how many products do you plan to display? I'll say a thousand plus. Currently selling elsewhere, and I'll say no. So you can click the ones that apply to you and continue. Next is gonna ask if you wanna include business features. And if you just open this up, it'll show you the different extensions for WooCommerce. These are all free that it wants to install for you. I'm just going to uncheck this for the simplicity of the video and click continue, but you can read through those if you like. Next is going to ask us to choose a theme. So the most popular WooCommerce theme that's free is Storefront. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this one right here. If you like, you can go through the paid themes and there's more free themes there to look through. And there we go, we have a welcome message here and I'm just going to close this for now. Next is going to ask to add your products. You can set up your payments, set up your taxes, shipping, marketing tools, and then personalize your store. So in this video, we're looking at how to add a shopping cart, but if you wanna go more in depth with a step-by-step -step guide, I highly recommend WP Beginners blog post that they have on their website that goes really in depth with all the steps of setting up WooCommerce if you need that. As well, check out the video tutorial that they offer on their YouTube channel. Now, next you may notice if you hover over the top left, we now have visit site, which we already have, but now we also have visit store. So if we open this up, we can see that we have a pretty basic looking theme, which is the storefront. And however, we don't have any products in our store right now. So for this example, I just want to go ahead and add some products quickly. So if we come down and we skip all of these, let's go to personalize my store. And right here, we can actually import some sample products. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, import products. There we go, it said that all sample products have been imported. Let's check out that storefront page again. We'll open this up. And now we can see we have some products that were installed here that we can now use. So if we click on one, we have a nice product page here as well. Just so we can test the shopping cart, I think maybe we should add a payment option. So on the left-hand side under WooCommerce, Let's go to settings. And then we have different tabs here that you can customize for your settings. Let's head over to payments. And now you can go through each one here to set them up, whatever it's asking for to set those up, make sure you set them up properly. And again, for my example, I'm gonna keep this simple and just put cash on delivery. So I'll enable this. You can actually click the setup button if you want to have more details on this. So the title that people will see, the description, the instructions. So especially with the pandemic going on, there's a lot of businesses that are doing online ordering and then people will pay in person. Now, normally it's not cash, but for this example, we'll go with that. Now we also have some enable for shipping methods and except for virtual orders, let's just save changes for this. And there we go. I think that's good enough for WooCommerce setup right now. I'm just trying to keep it simple. So the next thing we need to install is Seedprod. So please head over to seedprod.com or click the link in the description below. Once you get here, check out the get Seedprod button here on the top right. This will take you to the pricing page where you can set up an account. Once you have an account set up with Seedprod, we're going to click on login. On the left hand side, after you have an account, enter your email address, your password, and let's click on login. Once you've logged into your account, let's go ahead and click on the downloads tab right here. It's the second one. And the next, let's click on the big orange button here to download Landing Page Pro. On the bottom left hand side, you'll see your license key. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we can close this window for now. On the left hand side, back in WordPress, let's go ahead and look for plugins and add new. Up top near add plugins, let's go ahead and click on upload plugin. We can drag this zip file right here under the choose file button, or you can click this button to surf and browse to that zip file and select it manually. Next, let's go ahead and click install now and then activate the plugin. Next, let's go ahead and paste your license key right here and click on verify key. 
If everything went well, you should see a green success message up here. And if you're using the same browser as I am or similar, you can close this tab at the bottom. And there we go. You now have Seedprod fully installed. Next on the left hand side, let's go to pages under Seedprod. And we have different modes here, but today we're going to be creating a landing page. So on the bottom here, let's go ahead and create a new landing page. Next, you'll see a library of landing page templates. You can use these to add a pre-made page to your site quickly. There are dozens of professionally designed templates for almost any business goal. So once you find a template you like, hover over it and click the check mark. So you can see a little check mark right here. And that'll import this template into Seedprod so then you can work with it. For our example today, we're going to use a blank template just to show you how easy this can be. So let's go ahead and click on the check mark right here. It's going to ask you to enter your new page details. So your page name and your page URL. I'm just going to call mine custom cart. You can call yours whatever you wish, whatever makes sense for you. And then you have the page URL here. So this is what the user will actually see. Next, I'm going to click on save and start editing the page. Great. Now we're into the seed prod page builder. So on the left hand side, we have blocks. We have our standard blocks. These are basic blocks like the headline, text, lists. We have videos and images and buttons. And then down here we have advanced. So we have giveaways and social sharing buttons and opt-in forms and login forms and Google Maps. Lots to choose from here. And now that we have WooCommerce installed, we have extra blocks installed here that we can use, such as add to cart, the checkout, cart, products grid, recent products, sale products, and more. So the first thing we're going to do is just add a simple header with our logo inside of it. So I'll click the single column here. And this is a new row that we created. So the purple is the section and then the blue is a row. And then we're gonna take the image block and drag that right into here. Now we have an orange box. This is actually the block. So now we can click on this. This is the cog wheel for the settings. And on the left-hand side, we have some options. So here we can use our own image or use a stock photo image if you wish. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on use your own image. And now it'll take you to the media library. So if you already have a logo, uploaded you can select it here or you can come back to the upload file and click select files to select the logo that you want to use on your hard drive so there we go i uploaded a seed prod logo so i'm just going to use this for this example and click select on the bottom right hand corner there you go you can see that that was imported now that's obviously a little bit too big so on the left hand side i'm going to put for the image size the width of about 250. there we go and i'm going to align this to the left side next i'm going to select the section here we'll go to the settings and just Pick a background color here, maybe something in the really light kind of yellow, or even maybe more on the orange side. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Next, let's add a new section for the shopping cart section with a sidebar. So let's click the little plus sign here to add a section. And then we'll add the columns and we'll pick this one. So this has content on the left and then a sidebar on the right. So we'll pick this one. So this layout allows you to have a section for your shopping cart and an area to display reviews and testimonials. So let's start by adding the cart here on the left hand side. Let's come back to the blocks by clicking this button and we'll scroll all the way to the bottom to the WooCommerce blocks. Let's go ahead and grab the cart and we'll drag it right into this left side. Next, let's click on the block settings. Now we can see all of the options to edit the header, the buttons, the fields, alerts, and the cart itself. And then we have the advanced tab here as well for some spacing and device visibility for mobile and desktop designs. Okay, great. So we have the cart, but it's kind of difficult to see what's going on here. So let's open up the products page here. So if you come over to your URL slash shop, or if you're even on your homepage, if you have the same setup as me, you should see a shop button in your menu now. You can go ahead and click on shop. Now I'm just going to come through and add a couple of these items. There we go. I added three different things. We can close this window. Next, I'm going to save our page here just so we don't lose any progress. And I'm going to refresh. And there we go. Now we have some items here. We can see all of the colors and the layout and everything. So now we can customize this a lot easier. So again, let's click on the block. And then on the left-hand side, we have the options again. So here we can change the topography and the header color. So for header color, you can see that the cart totals there are changing. I'm going to change this to an orange color, maybe something a little brighter though, like that. And we can minimize this and come to the buttons. You can change the button style. So you have different options here, 2D, vintage, ghost, and link. Some of them are a little hard to see because we selected black, so you don't see the shadow and such. We have the button color and the border radius. Before I go any further though, I just want to tell you about global settings. So on the bottom left hand side here, let's click on this cog wheel. And these are applied to everything on the page instead of one block specifically. If you have multiple blocks, these will modify the fonts, colors, and any custom CSS that you may add. So on the left hand side, we have fonts. 
And here we have our header font is set to Helvetica new and body text font is the same. So if I just pick a header font and change it to something random, you'll see that all the headers on the page, which is cart totals are updated. And same as the body font, I'll just pick a random one here. You can see that all of that has changed. Now, if you need some help picking fonts, you can click on the font themes button. And these are pre-made settings of headers and body text. So for example, here's the first one, it's Roboto Slab and Open Sans. So if I click on this, you can see that that updated with those two fonts in the page. Next, let's minimize the fonts and go to colors. Now we can modify the colors on a global level. So all of the headers on the page are now black under this. So if I change this, they should update, but you'll notice that it doesn't update the cart totals. And the reason is anything you set on a local level for blocks is will override the global settings. So if I come down to the block settings with our header and select this and hit clear, now it'll use the global. So let's go back to the global colors and you can see that that blue has updated. And I just set that back to the orange color here. The text is now black. We can change that. Maybe something that's a little bit lighter on the gray. We have our buttons. So I think those maybe should be a little bit brighter. We could do something similar with the orange as well. So they pop off the page, but maybe we have too much orange going on right now. So we can do something with a yellow. We also have the links in the background. So right here, we have some links. We can maybe change those to the similar orange color as well. And then we have our background, which right now is set to white. So if I set this to gray, you'll see that whole section updates. I'm going to leave this for white for now. So go ahead and play with these colors. And if you need help with those as well, we have color palettes. So you can click here. We have some pre-made settings here that you can use. So for example, here's one that might be good. A lot of orange going on there, but again, that works for this design. And lastly, you have the background, which we already set on this section, but not on the whole page. So you can change this if you wish. I'm just gonna set that back to white. There we go, I think that looks good. Let's go back to our blocks. And we have the search blocks feature here so we can quickly find what we wanna look for. So I wanna look for testimonials. I'm just gonna drag this block over to the right side here. Next, you can click on the block settings and we have one testimonial here. If you wanna add multiple and have a carousel that goes through them automatically, you can do that. I'm just gonna leave the one here for now. And I'm gonna click on this one called John Smith. So here is the quote and you can update that. This is the profile image that you can update. So we can say, use your own image if you wanna upload one or use a stock photo. So I just typed in person and you'll see some faces pop up. I'll just select this one right here to keep it simple. You can change the name and their title. Great, you also have some alignment options here so you could center that or put it the right. I think I might actually put that in the center. You also have advanced settings here for different topography, spacing and device. So actually, why not? Let's add a second testimonial. I'll just do this quickly. Let's put in the testimonial quote. Next, let's add a picture. And lastly, we'll put the name and the job title. All right, good, so we, now we have two different ones. And now you'll see some buttons here to navigate through these. So you can add multiple, you can add as many as you want. So there's the first one and then the second one. Next, it always subconsciously makes people feel better when they see star ratings on a page, especially when they're buying something. So let's go ahead and type in star for blocks. We'll add a five star right here underneath. And that kind of pops out nicely as well to break up the page. Next, let's go ahead and add a countdown block. So it's right under advanced here. We can see countdown and I'll put this maybe on the top right above this. Now, if you click the options, again, you have lots of different settings here for these. Now the countdown type, I'm gonna set to a visitor timer. I click here, you can set the timer here to how long they have to check out. So I'll put about five minutes. So once they start to fill out the information, they'll see some type of urgency to finish the purchase. You can also change the alignment and the size. So if you want it a little bit smaller, I'll leave that medium. I think that's fine. And what do you want to have happen after this expires? You could maybe redirect or you could show a message. Now this block comes with templates. So if you click here, you can actually click on these and it'll instantly update the design of your countdown. So I think I'll keep this or put this as the circles right here. I think that looks pretty nice. Next, let's go ahead and add a headline right above here and I'll click the settings and we'll just type in your cart will expire in dot, dot, dot. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now that font is way too big. So let's bring that down somewhere around 18 and I'm gonna come under advanced and color. I'm gonna override the global setting for that color and I'm gonna set this to a black. Next, let's come back and add a new section and this will just be the full width and we'll go to our blocks. I just wanna add a divider right here and then underneath this, I wanna put a headline. We'll drop this in here and let's update that and say, have you forgotten something? And again, I'm actually gonna change this to black and we'll come back to our blocks and come down to WooCommerce and I wanna set 
the best selling products. I'm going to put that right underneath here. And there we go. We can see all of our best selling products load right underneath this header. And here we have quite a few here. I'm actually going to limit this so we can enable pagination and it has a limit underneath this. So I'm going to say eight and that'll give us two different rows here of four. You can also show the order by or the item count. So the item count on the left hand side and then the order by on the right. So now they can drop down and select a different sorting method if you like. Next under the advanced tab, we have different options such as alignment, description, topography, price, price color, sale badge. So you can fully customize how this looks for your website. We also have the button, the type of button that you want to use. We have the image. So you can, for example, add a huge border radius and make them circles if you like. And maybe I'll do that because it kind of matches our countdown timer just to keep that consistency. We also have border colors and border width and white space. So for example, you can make a lot of white space around these if you like. Under spacing, we have some top margin. So you can add some top margin there and we have some padding that we can add. So for example, if I add a hundred, you can see a hundred padding is all around this. I think it looks fine how it is. And then our device visibility. So the way that you would use this is if you only wanted this to show on desktop, you have the option to hide this on mobile. So if I switch over to our mobile preview here in the bottom left, and then I come down, you'll see that this is grayed out and these will not show up on mobile. So as well, I can click on this, go under advanced device visibility, and then hide on mobile. And we'll do the same thing here with the divider, just so that's not showing either. So everything above this will show on mobile and this will not. Let's go back to the desktop version. And there we go. I think this page looks pretty good. I would continue to customize it for your situation, but let's go ahead and save this page. And I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. And here it'll give us the option to see the live page. So there we go. We can see the page is in action and we have everything. We have our cart, we have the countdown, some testimonials here, a star rating, and we have some best-selling products here that we can go through and people can add those to their cart. So this is the preview URL. Let's go check out the live page. So I set mine to custom cart. So here it's the same looking page you can see. However, there still is one important step to activate your custom cart. So let's come over to seed prod and dashboard. And on the left hand side, let's come under WooCommerce and come down to settings. We want to head over to the advanced tab under settings. So under the advanced tab here, we have the cart page right here. So right now we're using the default one that came with WooCommerce. If we click this, it'll ask you to search for the new one. We can search for a page. I call mine custom cart. So we can see that right here. I'll select that and scroll down to the bottom and click on save changes. Great. Now, if we come back to our store, we can see our cart here has five items in it. If I view cart, you can see it goes from the WooCommerce default page to now our custom cart page that we fully customized. Now that you know how to add a shopping cart to WordPress without code, check out this video on how to build a Netflix landing page clone with WordPress to really help expand your seed prod skills for creating fantastic looking pages. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.